30 in your hymnal, which I should have told you before. And I'm going to change the key because I can only sing that key in my kitchen. Yeah. Um. 
You'll be with them, meet their needs too, and be a blessing to them in their homes as they watch the past post, uh, post service and then uh, walk with you. We pray, Lord, for those not able to be with us this morning, we think of Katrina as she takes part in her aunt's funeral and uh, up north there, and pray, Lord, that you'll just bless her as she shares in that uh, that service, guide her as she uh, brings the message there. And we're thankful, Lord, that Daryl's able to be uh, leading the service for us today, and uh, that you just have your people there to step in and uh, various positions. We thank you, Lord, for all those who serve you in various capacities here in the church and serve you day by day throughout their lives. As each one of us has a separate calling wherever we might happen to be to serve you in the spirit of holiness. And Lord, we pray for the special needs of some of our people, that there's health needs or family situations, and just pray, Lord, that they'll feel your presence and your guidance through these days. Those who need a physical touch will feel that touch upon their bodies, knowing that God is a great healer. And those that are facing other situations in life's journey will just ask that you will just lead and guide them uh, through sometimes difficult times that they may be uh, going through. We thank you, Lord, for our district assembly, how everything went along well there, and uh, for the inspiration that our general superintendent and uh, her husband shared uh, with us, and particularly in the great mission program of our church all over the world today and uh, how thrilling it is to hear what you are doing in various uh, parts of the world even in those troubled areas that are facing wars and uh, there's places like Ukraine and the Middle East and many other places facing wars that we don't even hear about on the news but we know you're aware and you know that you can meet the needs of the people in those places. And so thankful, Lord, that in uh, so many of these places you have uh, uh, opened up opportunities for the Church of Nazarene to send missionaries in, even in restricted areas that we can't even name because of the restrictions. And yet uh, you're there and to hear reports of how the church is growing behind the uh, closed doors, as it were. And uh, nothing can close the Holy Spirit out. So, Lord, we rejoice in that. And thank you for uh, our missionaries that you've called to go to these various parts of the world to carry the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And we pray this morning for our coming back to our own district here for our the Toronto Grace Spanish Church uh, uh, on our prayer list for this week and just pray, Lord, that you'll be with them and help them to reach people of the Spanish language throughout the West Toronto area there. So thankful for the uh, great work that's being done among Spanish people and other ethnic groups uh, through our church in uh, particularly in the Toronto area but some other areas too and the new works are opening all the time, and we just uh, praise you for what you are doing there and pray for direction upon that church and uh, the leadership of it. Now, Lord, uh, continue to direct us as we worship together this morning. Have your way in all that is said and done. May it all be to your honor and glory. Amen. Amen. Our, uh, as we set our tithes and offerings, our uh, text for that <coughs> is, <coughs> it is from Proverbs chapter 3, uh, verses 9 and 10. I'll read from the uh, Living Bible. It says, Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income. 
and he will fill your heart. He'll be our need. God is faithful. He never needs. So it's a thought a it comes in a privilege that we can share it with him in this way. Let us pray. <coughs> Father, we thank you for your care day by day and for the way you provide for our needs and uh, in this land of blessing you prepared for us beyond our needs and we just thank you for that and we count it an honor to be able to return the tithes of what you've entrusted to us to you along with our offerings of love to you and pray Lord you just bless each one as they present their offerings at this time. Amen.
from Numbers chapter 13 and beginning to read at the 26th verse. And then the other one from Hebrews chapter 3. Numbers 13, verse 26. Uh, this is the following the uh, children of Israel. They got to Kadesh Barnea on the edge of the promised land that God had told them he was giving to them. And they sent spies in to check out the land before they entered. And this is the report that they brought back. 26. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran in Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, and said, We came unto the land where thou sentest us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great, and moreover we saw the children of Anakin there, that was giant. The Anakin, the Amalekites, and the Amalekites, dwell in the land at the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. The verse 30. And uh, then in... Uh, Hebrews chapter 3, beginning to read at uh, verse 7. Verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the days of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my way. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any, in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But, Exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. Reading to the 15th verse of that portion of God's Word. We want to look at these verses along with some others today. And uh, today of this message, uh, taking possession of holiness. People that they got to Hadesh were ready to take possession of the land, but they didn't do it. For fear they backed off and spent 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. The holiness is like the new verse. It's a gift from God. Not something we deserve, not something we earn, but receive it as his gift to us. Jesus died to sanctify or make holy his people. Uh, his church. People are his church, and you know it's not the building, hear that a lot, but it's the people. We are the church of Jesus. And uh, he died to, and to purify that. In Ephesians chapter 5 and uh, verse 25, 26, at least in part, it says here, <coughs> Uh, therefore, as the church is select unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their husbands. Christ also loved the church. 
church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. He loved his church and gave himself to cleanse it, that it might be clean. So like any gift, it must be accepted. If refused, it is not really complete. Somebody gives you something and you say, no, I don't want that. Well, the, the gift giving is stalled right there. <laughs> it isn't complete. One gives, the other receives. And we have a God who's on the giving hand. And I'm not talking about a prosperity gospel, as they call it, but and the fact that God does supply our needs and he promises to be with us and, and he's giving us. Uh, and we in this land need to be so aware of that because God has given us so much. So we hear what goes on in other parts of the world. It's, it's just a reminder of how blessed we are by the hand of God. And not that we deserve it, but because of God's grace and mercy uh, to us. The wonderful grace of God that the sister was playing on the piano there a little earlier. Well, how does one appropriate or uh, take possession of this gift of holiness that we talk of? That I'm going to speak on taking possession of holiness. It's offered to us. We take it enough. Well, Briefly, by faith. That could sum up the rest of the message, really. But let's look at faith. Faith that God is able. Oh, is it wonderful to have a God who is able to do, as Paul said, abundantly beyond all that we ask of him. There's nothing impossible with God. You know, sometimes... Uh, we may have the task to do of some kind and uh, we're just not able to do it for various reasons. Maybe we don't have the, the strength to do it. That's the problem that little guys have. <laughs> Bigger people may not realize that as much. Uh, some may, maybe don't have the mental ability. We haven't had the training in, in a certain thing. We've been having problems with the plumbing over it. Uh, Partly rented out here, and Bill's solved this problem so many times, but right now there's one that's kind of hidden away you can't get to, and you got to have the plumber come in to, to get to fix this pump that's uh, there to pump the sewage. You know, uh, we don't have the the equipment the uh, skill for it, so we have to call it. Well, uh, there's certain things that we don't have the, the ability to. We're all gifted in different ways. And we don't have to worry about what we don't have. Just use what we do have. Amen? Amen. That's the important part. <laughs> what God has given us. But God never has those limitations, those problems. He is able to do all things. And uh, that's what uh, Caleb and encourage these people to do as they came to the edge of the uh, the promised land there and, and they were hesitant to to go in. Said, oh yeah, it's, it's a lovely land and it's uh, so productive and they even brought the, the fruit back, the grapes back and said the uh, clumps of grapes were so big it took two to the carry them, you know, on a pole. Uh, it was an abundance. You know, we plant our gardens this time of year so we look for abundance uh, uh, later on. We want to have uh, good uh, results from that kind. Well, they look and they said, man, this place is really rich. And, and there's so many that say, but they said, there's, there's giants in the land and, and their cities are walled and all these things. Start making excuses for not going forward. And uh, Caleb and this man of faith it says he stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome. Yes, 
this giant's in there. He was aware of that. He wasn't uh, somebody that didn't see what the others had seen. But he saw beyond what they had seen. Oh, when we see our problems, that everybody can see the problems, but, but we see the greatest God that's over above our problems and able to look after them all. If we take them to him, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there, the psalm says. Well, that's what Caleb was saying. This Caleb was a man of God. He was a man of faith. He said, we can do this. God is with us. Some of the other accounts mention a little more of what he said there, but God's with us. We can take this land. Don't be afraid. Don't back off. Don't sin against God by not following through. God had promised Canaan. It brought them to the, the, the very edge of it. The entrance way. And he would have given them the victory if they'd gone on. But they lacked faith. Is that serious? Is it serious to lack faith in God? Yes. Well, look at the situation. They spent 40 years in the wilderness. The adults of that generation were buried out in the wilderness. Forty years of wasted life. Never got into the, the promised land. Never really able to eat the fruit of that land other than what those flies had brought back. It was left for their children to go in later on. Oh, what they missed by not experiencing that land. And oh, what we missed when we don't trust God, put faith in Him, follow His way, but rather see all the difficulties that Satan will put a lot in our best sight and miss the opportunities that God has given. And most of all, the spiritual blessings. Oh, how many are living below their privileges as Christians struggling along, failing to go on to holiness because they don't have the faith to step out with God. Many say a holy life is impossible. Well, by our own strength it would be. Yes, but to God, no. Nothing's impossible with God. Look at what Paul wrote to the Thessalonians when he was talking about this in 5th chapter of uh, 1st Thessalonians. And uh, speaking of holiness, he says, As the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Faithful is God, is calling us to holiness. He'll lead us through. He'll cleanse that old nature. He'll fill our hearts with his spirit. He'll lead us to holiness. Yes, we don't do it ourselves. It's a gift of God. He's able. Do we trust him for it? Well, he's able. He's also willing. Now there's quite a difference between being able and willing, being willing. You might uh, have some special work you want done, and you might sort of check over your friends to see, well, who's able to do this job? Who has the skill that to do what I need down here, or the time, or the strength, or whatever it happens to be. And then when you go no and find the right person, the big problem is, are they willing to do it? <laughs> it is a lot of willing people. Some are willing to do it, and the rest are all willing to let them do it. <laughs> I imagine you've been in that situation some. 
sometimes when you've been looking for somebody to uh, lend you a hand in whatever it might happen to be, and trying to find somebody that's willing to do it. I'm not saying ones that are not able, but if you check it down, if you find out, well, two of my friends that who would be able to do this job? And then the big question is, are they willing to do it? Oh, I trust we're willing people, but uh, we have a God who is willing. Look at Luke chapter uh, chapter 11 and verse 13. He says, he's speaking about the Holy Spirit. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Promise of Jesus. How much more will God give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? The Holy Spirit who comes in to cleanse our life. Oh, he came to in a sense to save us, but comes in a fuller measure to cleanse the old nature of that is a hindrance to us living the spiritual life. God gives him this Holy Spirit to cleanse us. He's willing to do that. Can you imagine going to a doctor sometime and he had diagnosed as a certain problem he says, well, you've got this health problem, and uh, we know the solution, I can cure it for you, uh, but I won't do that. You say, I think it's time to find another doctor. Of course, you can't find another doctor nowadays, but that's beside the point. You say, well, I mean, if, if this man, he knows what to do, but he, he's not willing to do it for me, I better find another practitioner to do it. And you think God's like that? Oh, the God that I serve isn't like that. He doesn't say, well, you have a certain need, and uh, I as God can serve that need, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to just let you suffer through on your own. Well, that's not the kind of God that we have in the Bible. That's not the God that, that we've experienced as Christians for Christians in our lives. No, he's not that. He convicts of our sin. Let's us know what our need is. That's always a beginning. Doesn't say if you go to the doctor, the first thing is for him to find the problem. You're not feeling well. So maybe you go to the doctor. Well, doctor, I, I, I'm just not feeling well. I'm not keeping well and. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I need some help. Well, the first thing you want to know is him to diagnose it and see what it is. Hopefully it's not anything too serious and you can get it cleared up, but the diagnosis, so let's find what conviction is. Not totally, but partly, you know. It's finding out what the need is. When we realize, as a Christian, when we realize that it's that old nature still fighting against her, our Christian nature. We want to serve God. We want to do what's right in His sight. And yet there's always that pull the other way. It's that the, the original sin that started with it, Adam sinned, and we're born with it. We're not responsible for it, but we are responsible of what we do about it. And so we, have, we get that feeling that there's something, I need to get rid of this uh, this battle that goes on between my desire to serve God and that inner nature that pulls me the other direction. And we get it. So God, in his willingness to help us, brings us to conviction. And he invites us to come and receive. It's an invitation. It's not a requirement that we have to do A, B, and C, or this, that, and the other thing. He invites us to come and receive the Holy Spirit, and receive his cleansing. An invitation has to be received. Uh, when I was 
as assembly this week, uh, the, as lunchtime came, you know, the, and the Rosewood Church had decided that they were going to have uh, their delegates, that's our largest church, so they had more delegates, to uh, have their delegates together for lunch down in a room in the church basement, it was at their church, and uh, that's who brought in for them, and the rest of the people, like wherever they went for lunch. But the pastor of that church had, in the morning session, come tap me on the shoulder and said, uh, our Rosewood people are having lunch downstairs today. I'd like you to join us for it. Uh, come and have lunch with us. So I said, sure, thank you. I'm glad to do that. And so afterwards, I went down with their people and went in and uh, received the invitation. And when I went in there, I didn't see any food around. Just the table and the chairs and a few people, a few more came in later and filled up the place. But after a while, the, the food came in, ordered from Swiss Chalet, of course, <laughs> and uh, boxes of food, and we were... But see, he gave me an invitation to, to come and join his people, his congregation for it. But if I just gone up the door and gone somewhere on my own, that invitation wouldn't have been much good. You know, it was their kindness, but it wasn't until I accepted this invitation that I was able to enjoy the, the food that they were supplying and the fellowship with the people of his congregation gave some, know some of them a little better. Some I knew before, others I didn't. You see, we have to accept the invitation to uh, benefit from it, just like I had to accept their invitation, gladly, by, my, by the way, but accept it in order to have that nice lunch with them. And that's the way with our relationship with God. God says to his people, after he has a, well, he invites us to come to him, repenting of our sins and being uh, cleansed forgiven for our sins and passes, and that's glorious. But then he comes to us as his people, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and says that if you will confess your, your need, if you will consecrate yourself unto me totally, I will cleanse out that nature and make it more possible for you to live the holy life it is really a desire of your heart as a Christian, but often a struggle. He invites us to, to come and receive that cleansing. He will answer our needs when we just come to his invitation. He will meet us. He will cleanse our hearts. The old song says, Consecrate to Christ your all and upon the Savior call. Praise God in his source also. Let the Holy Spirit come in and uh, cleanse us. Wonderful songs that we don't have in our new hymn book. Uh, those holiness songs, I wish we could dig them out of the past and uh, sing them again, you know. A lot of them have been lost. But the message, he, the invitation there, it's the invitation of God to come and receive his Holiness. <clears throat> if one believes that Jesus is willing, what can hold him back? That's the problem. Caleb believed that God could take them into this promised land, but fear held them back. No how far. Fear and unbelief. That was their hindrance, wasn't it? And so we have a need face to expect him now. Expect he will do it now. Hebrews, as we read there in Hebrews uh, chapter three and uh, verse seven. He says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts 
as in the provocation that that day when they were tested in the wilderness, in other words, uh, in, the, <coughs> in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Today shall hear his voice. God is always willing. He's willing at the time. You know the devil's favorite word? Procrastination. <laughs> yeah. It's, he works all the, the things that he can. And if he can't get a person to outwardly sin, the person wants to serve God and get out of sin, get saved from sin, confess their sins, and accept Jesus Christ, if the person's determined to do that, and I trust that if anybody here has not done that to clear have that determination or you're going to do it, then the devil comes in and says, well, that, that's fine, you know, it's a good uh, idea, uh, but, but just wait. Put it off. And there'll, there'll be a better time. Just uh, wait until, the, I'll show you the right time. You know? Put it off. Oh, we miss so much when we put things up. And especially spiritually. And that's the devil's idea. To just put it on. You know, you, you know you've been forgiven and uh, you're serving the Lord, but, uh, well, you know, it's, it's that battle going on inside, you know, but, uh, but one day you're going to Make that total consecration. Turn your life over 100% to God. But don't do it yet. Devil. He even has churches that will teach that. The feast of sanctification is, yes, it's biblical, it's good. Uh, but it, it's just gradual. You, know, you just work at it through life and gradually get to it. Well, there is a progress in the sanctified life, but but you don't gradually get to it. And that's what some say. And find somebody that's been gradually growing in holiness and uh, toward sanctification, but they haven't made it yet. And in 20 years they can still be growing, but they haven't made it yet. No, Jesus says, come to me now, confess, uh, and uh, consecrate yourself totally, and God will do it now. He'll cleanse that old nature of it. He'll fill you with his spirit. He'll give you victory in Jesus. But some say, well, right. And then there's others that teach, well, uh, this, you aren't, can't be sanctified until the time of death. I think I mentioned that last week, but, you know, it's good to remind that you'll hear this preached a lot. It's well, thank you, that comes to death. In that case, death is our greatest friend, but no, the Bible says that death is a, our final enemy. He is an enemy. We don't like to think. So, death is not a reward. In that. Well, there is a sense of Christian because we, we step from life into eternity and what we come to that church. But uh, but if we can't find this blessing until we die, then the sooner we die the better. Uh, don't do that. We've lost too many people. <laughs> but uh, but uh, no. It's, it's something for us now. Consecrate yourself now and God will meet that need. And then, of course, there's one or two churches that teach about purgatory, that, well, you can't be sanctified holy. You can come to know the Lord and serve Him, but uh, uh, after you die, then you have to go through a purging uh, <coughs> period of getting cleansed out to, to, in purgatory suffering. Not God doesn't say that. God says, come to me now. He wants us now to receive this wonderful gift of holiness, of 
entire sanctification, that cleansing of the old nature. He wants us to possess it, not to wait till after we're over this, this life and uh, suffering in some purgatory to receive. No, it's God's gift to us now. The longer you put off anything, the harder it is to do. Have we found that? I need to do something, but you put it off, and the more you put it off, the, the harder it is to do. I, uh, one of the articles I wrote in Gospel Tidings a few months ago, I mentioned that, uh, that the hardest thing about writing one of those articles is getting started. And I, I said, if you read it in there, I said that I'll often put on my calendar a certain week and write gospel tidings. And uh, I look at that Monday when I look at the calendar for the week and you know, I'll have to get at that sometime this week. First thing you know, it's Saturday night. I'm ready for church or for service, but I haven't written gospel tidings yet. So I turn the page, and on the next page, I write it again, right on. And uh, eventually, I get it. It's just getting started. Because once, if you don't, when you first get the, the notion that this is the, something you need to do, if you don't do it, then it doesn't get done. Uh, my grandfather, who lived with us some of the time when I was growing up, most of the time, I guess, uh, I, think, I think it was him that said to me when I was at school, you know, if you got homework, come home and do it first thing. Get it over with, then you can go and play. But uh, if you put it off till after you play, then you put it off to something else, and then something else, and something else, and it just keeps going, and the next day you're at school, you haven't got your homework done. Anybody has to know, don't put up any hands. <laughs> I have had that problem. But uh, I remember when I was at college, we'd have term papers to write. And, and usually the professor would tell us well in advance, you know, that this, on this term paper due a certain day. So we'd go home and work at it and get it done. And uh, my wife type it and uh, ready to hand it in. When the time came to hand it in, I just hand it in. No sweat, as they say. <laughs> there were a certain number of students there that, that they'd be up all night, the night before, writing their term paper. And hopefully get it done enough to look it under the professor's door so he'd have it in the morning for the, the, the deadline. So he'd have the, so the next morning to get it in. And so they were tired out the next day. Some of them missed the next day of classes because they'd been up all night working on their term paper. And I don't think they did as good a job because it was a rush job. How much better to take my grandfather's advice and get it done early and you can forget about it. I don't say forget what you put in it. Hopefully you remember it. But, but you can forget about doing it. You go on to other things. But when we put it off, it just gets harder. And that's the way spiritual. Those people that are saying, well, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm walking with God, but I know this, this inner nature is still bugging me, but one day I'm going to make that total consecration to God and let him cleanse my heart and be over it. And have that day. One day. The more you put it off, time goes on, and some never get to it. Hebrews 3, and verse 8, uh, says, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Don't harden. It warns against a hardening heart. How in Israel, Pardon? The wicked things that they had done? No, not particularly. We 
got into the land, they brought the fruit back, they did what they report, they hadn't done anything particularly wicked. And it was just a lack of food, lack of faith, lack of accepting God's word. It hardened their hearts. They seen the difficulties instead of seeing God. Oh, friends, there's difficulties all around us. Let us keep our eyes upon God and not upon the difficulties. The difficulties may not go away, but we'll have God helping us through them. The song said, put your hand in the hand of the man of Galilee. Put your hand in Christ. Accept him. A lack of faith to go forward prevented the people from enjoying the threats of the land. Oh, they could have God with them in the wilderness. He hadn't forsaken them. He led them through the wilderness. He provided the manna for them to eat. He gave guidance. But it was a long 40 years of struggle and defeat. And they could have been in the land enjoying the blessing. And God wants us to be a holy people, freed from that sinner, sinful inner nation that would battle against our Christian nature. He wants us to be free of rejoicing in. God is able. He is willing. And he's in the sanctifying business now. Any Christian who will consecrate totally to him, he will sanctify. Yes, you can possess holiness now. When you trust in him today. He is for us. All today. And we're going to sing in closing number 241. Let him have his way with thee. Our altar is always open as a place of prayer. You have a need. And if particularly today, you say if you were want to receive his holiness. You Christian, you want that place. You want that freedom from that. Confusion of inner sin. Come and receive me. Let him have his way with me. 241. Now comes the leader.